welcome to episode two of the Spaghetti Western Build Saga. I'm your host, Christopher, and today we're talking brakes. Uh, before I start off on too much, I want to give a couple of shout-out thank yous to a lot of people who have inspired and also been invaluable in helping me figure out what to do, what I want to do. So, uh, one of the fellow YouTubers out there, uh, is a couple of guys called Bad Obsession Motorsport. If you're watching this, you've probably been watching them for years. Uh, those guys out there on working on Project Binky are amazing, and you guys really truly inspired me to do this work. Uh, also, as far as resources, <clears throat> you can't do anything without finding out about stuff online anymore. So, uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, X Web Forums. They are uh, xwebforums.com is a website for uh, Fiat and Lancia enthusiasts. They, you know, kind of pay attention to a lot of everything, uh, but they kind of specialize mainly in uh, Fiat X19s. And but they have a little, you know, corner of the website for us Lancia guys too. Uh, the other one is mainly uh, a Lancia website called uh, Lancisti, L Lancisti, I don't know how you spell it, but it's Lancisti.net. And they are another valuable resource uh, forums for uh, trying to research what you want to do and what's kind of possible and what's been done before. So thank you guys, everyone who has gone before me. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Or I'd be a lot more clueless than I already am. So, brakes. <clears throat> uh, the Fiat X19 and the Lancia Scorpion share the same suspensions and uh, the same brake systems. Uh, actually, uh, the Lancia Scorpion uh, was given slightly larger brake calipers in the rears, which I guess are favored by some people who race X19s. Uh, I guess a little bit larger piston size, whatever, but just better braking. And since uh, a lot of the weight in mid-engine cars is concentrated toward the rear of the car behind the, you know, the passengers and driver, uh, it is advantageous to have more effective brakes in back because uh, both of these cars were designed without fuel tanks in the front. Uh, they both have uh, fuel tanks mounted essentially just in front of the engine in both cars, which I imagine is a, a very good safety place. I mean, it's not going to get crushed uh, in an accident. It's really a safe place, but in my mind, uh, it it's not exactly ideal as far as uh, weight distribution. Uh, so I'm going to be changing that, uh, good or bad, right or wrong, I'm going to change that. Partially because in my engine bay, there is no room <laughs> in front of the engine for a fuel tank. The end of the engine, uh, the front of the engine is basically nestled right up against the firewall right behind the passenger and driver's backs. And so, uh, here we are talking about brakes. A lot of people, when uh, they do decide to modify their cars, they go right to the engine, making the engine as powerful as possible, as fast as possible, uh, and ultimately as dangerous as possible. Because when you uh, modify a car to make it faster at the expense of everything else, uh, the other systems aren't necessarily designed and engineered to tolerate those greater forces that you're going to be uh, placing on the car. And so you might be overheating and overcooking the brake system uh, along with the suspension when you uh, exert these extra forces upon the car. I really try to take a balanced approach to everything and not uh, neglect uh, one area at the, at the expense of others. But, you know, we'll see how I do. So, uh, this uh, brake caliper is not off my Lancia Scorpion. Uh, after I pulled my Lancia Scorpion brake calipers, 
uh, a fellow ex-Weber wanted them for their race car. Uh, so this is a brake caliper, rear brake caliper off a Fiat X19. Uh, this is the front brake caliper off my Lancia Scorpion. And you can see that they're both in fantastic condition. Uh, they're both quite rusty. Uh, they are uh, aluminum bodied calipers with uh, cast steel or cast iron uh, pad carriers. Uh, they work off of a a wedge, uh, uh, like an interference wedge between the caliper carrier or the pad carrier and the piston uh, part of the caliper uh, to modulate uh, motion between them. And so they use like these ramps, uh, but these ramps are exposed to the elements. And uh, if you've ever looked at your brakes in a modern car, you'll know that brake dust and everything accumulates so quickly on parts and it's not very lubricative. <laughs> so as a result, it seems that without constant maintenance that these ramps are subject to a lot of uh, added friction uh, just from uh, the environment that they're living in. So what I have here now and what I am attempting to go to in this big automotive experiment is these are calipers off a new, well, I don't know what year it is, but the uh, new Fiat 500 Abarth. Uh, they're uh, red. <laughs> uh, they're much bigger. They're, uh, compared to the original stuff, I mean, they may look kind of similar wise uh, dimensions, but the piston and the front brake caliper is much, much larger. Uh, I don't have the specs right off the top of my head, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, the rears actually look a little bit smaller than the rear Fiat X19 caliper, but the piston in this caliper is larger than the piston in this caliper. Uh, also, what's wonderful about these new more modern calipers is they have an enclosed sliding piston or a sliding pin design uh, protected by little rubber bellows which uh, keeps everything nice and lubricated and allows the uh, brake to uh, modulate itself uh, as brake pads wear over time and kind of self-center themselves around the rotor. Weight-wise, uh, this is actually very comparable in weight to this. Uh, but this front brake caliper is a hell of a lot heavier than this. This is aluminum and steel design. Uh, this is all steel. Uh, <clears throat> on the website, I, for the Fiat USA, I thought I had read that these Abarth calipers were an aluminum uh, steel construction, but no. This is all steel. So I am going to be adding some uh, unsprung weight mass to the front axles of the car. That said, <laughs> all this it should allow for much better, more reliable stopping, easier parts to uh, replace if something does go wrong and I need to replace it and service it. Uh, and that then moves us on to brake rotors. These are the brake rotors, front and rear, off the Lancia Scorpion. They are both uh, thin, non-vented rotors. They're just solid rotors. Uh, they're super rusty. They're identical size. From what I understand, they're 210, 211 uh, millimeter diameter. And back in the day, they were considered probably pretty state-of-the-art. Uh, a lot of people still race uh, Fiat X19s with these same rotors, and X19s, properly set up, are a massive uh, weapon in racing situations. And someone calling me? Nope, that's just a text. So, uh, what I'm going to use for the new rotors, let's move some of this off to the side so I can show you guys. Uh, I am, instead of running a solid front rotor, 
In the front, I am utilizing a vented front rotor. Uh, so it's uh, more than twice as thick, or ish. But its uh, cooling properties are massively better. Uh, I know a lot of people debate whether drilled and slotted rotors are necessary with modern brakes, but I got these for a great deal, and so I thought I would try them. This rotor uh, is in fact a 260 millimeter rotor. Uh, I got it off uh, a moderator on uh, lonsisti.net, and he was getting rid of them, and I thought they would, I would try them in my car. Uh, comparing them, you can see that the 260 millimeter rotor is much larger, over it's like a over a half inch uh, in radius larger on each side. Uh, I settled on this size because uh, bolting to the front uprights or the the hubs where these uh, these calipers mount to uh, the caliper carriers. I don't know the words. Words are not important. How these mount in front? <laughs> uh, they're they are spaced apart at uh, 100 millimeters center to center between the two mounting bolts. Uh, out of curiosity, I checked a friend of mine's Fiat Abarth uh, to see what uh, calipers he was running and, and what size those were. Uh, Tim, uh, also known as Fiat Monkey, who's been an invaluable resource too, thank you. Uh, I did uh, mic out these, uh, these front uh, calipers also at 100 millimeters uh, center to center uh, between the bolt bolts. Uh, the bolts themselves are bigger. Uh, the original bolts for the original calipers are uh, 10 millimeter uh, by 1.25 uh, pitch uh, bolts. And the newer bolts, I'll do a close up, are 12 millimeters. So they are a lot beefier, and as a result of that, all I did really to mount these front calipers on, which I will illustrate later, I'll show you the car, is uh, measure out kind of where these uh, bolts started. Uh, roughly, the holes, uh, the holes in the, uh, the caliper carriers were like roughly 25 64 and I had to arrive up at uh, 15 30 seconds. And this is a just a drill bit uh, gauge, so you can find out you know what size drill bits you need to use for an application. So what I did was I literally went up in 64th increments uh, using uh, five drill bits and just using the standard uh, DeWalt. 18-volt uh, drill with lots of uh, uh, cutting oil, uh, slowly, carefully went up uh, bit by bit uh, until I arrived at the size I needed. Uh, one of the reasons why I did it in small steps is because it's a lot of steel to hand drill sideways, uh, trying to apply even pressure and maintain axiality going through the carrier without trying to wobble off axis. So that was fun. I've only done one side, but after doing that and then mounting these calipers in place, uh, I measured from the center of the hub out to uh, roughly where the uh, caliper should mount. And I came up with a figure that I needed to have brake rotors of this size or this size. Uh, they're almost identical sizes. This is a 257 millimeter brake rotor. This is for the rear. It's a solid rotor because uh, these rear calipers are much uh, smaller and they can only fit a solid rotor through them. Uh, I got these 260 millimeter ones a, because 
it was a deal, and I thought I would take a punt off uh, off the forums. But uh, there is only uh, one and a half millimeters difference uh, on you know the radial me measurement going out there. So a 260 millimeter or 257 millimeter uh, front rotor will work just fine with this application. And uh, also got to give a shout out, I, I bought this blah, rear rotor, uh, I found it online from uh, dcperformance.co.uk, uh, it's a British uh, uh, parts company and I was really, they have, they have a fantastic site and I was able to find exactly what I was looking for. Uh, these uh, rotors uh, were listed for uh, a mid-90s Alfa Romeo 146. Uh, they, the, this specific aftermarket uh, rear rotor is a black diamond slotted rotor. So they have like these uh, you know, radial slots milled into the rotor. I read good reviews about uh, the performance of these rotors and uh, I was able to find them on that website for a reasonable price. They do sell this exact same size rotor in the uh, vented style, uh, the same uh, height, everything, uh, for uh, the same Alfa Romeo, uh, 257 millimeter, and so if you want to do one-stop shopping to get uh, front and rear rotors with this modification, you can find that stuff there all at once. Okay, so rear rotors, front rotors, calipers, let's move on with this. <laughs> Here we are at the car. Something a little more interesting to watch. Uh, so these are the 15-inch uh, wheels that I have with this. Um, they, you can see the Abarth uh, 500 calipers behind them. Okay, so aside from the leaves and the spider webs, uh, these are the new brakes uh, centered on there with the Abarth calipers, as interesting as that is. Uh, I think it's going to be a pretty good upgrade for this car. I do have the uh, steel spacers on for these wheels. However, the uh, this setup will fit a 14 inch wheel combination. These are Maserati Biturbo SI wheels. Uh, typically these Maserati Biturbo wheels are uh, between six and six and a half inches. Uh, the SI uh, have seven inch wheels, so I, I really kind of like their dishy uh, construction. I got this set from a guy uh, locally who was nice enough to sell them to me, named Jan. Thank you, Jan, I appreciate it. They need longer lug nuts. <laughs> All right, well, regardless, and however, holding the wheels just on the hub, you can see that they clear these Abarth uh, calipers and the big rotors. So, there's that. <laughs> I don't know that they'll clear 13s. Uh, that might be getting really tight with this setup, but uh, this will work for now. One of the things that uh, that I tried to tackle uh, was in doing the front uh, brake rotors and uh, brake caliper, centering the uh, 
rotor within the caliper. Uh, it has to, well, it actually fits together that way. And so you want to center the caliper, you know, as, as close as you can in the center of the rotor so that you don't get any parts touching, so that uh, everything has the space it needs to operate uh, appropriately. Uh, one of the measurements that I found uh, with this brake rotor uh, and it was just this rotor specifically. I, I don't know if it applies to other rotors. However, it is that uh, I needed to create a spacer uh, that fit behind the rotor in between the hub and the rotor to push uh, the rotor out a little bit with respect to the caliper so that it would center appropriately. Uh, so what I had was uh, I did a little bit of uh, cardboard aided design CAD, which if you're familiar with Project Binky, Bad, Bad Obsession Motorsports, uh, that's kind of what they live with and live by. Uh, I did it also, I think it's, it's just a, when you are building stuff and you don't have access to all the tools and stuff, you just kind of use what you can. So uh, I use this. Uh, for a lot of applications. I don't use it all the time, but in this instance I did, and uh, what I needed essentially was about 330 seconds of thickness to push the uh, rotor out a little bit. What I had and what I found around me, and I don't recommend doing this, is a street sign. Now the street sign that I had was for, it wasn't a stop sign, it wasn't a speed limit sign, it was another sign that uh, was from uh, it looked like some kind of road maintenance thing, and I didn't steal it. I found it. It was left on a on a property uh, that uh, we lived at, and so I kept it because when you build stuff, it's nice to have spare metal. So this uh, street sign measured out nicely at uh, three thirty seconds, and it's aluminum, and so it was very easy to uh, cut and form into a spacer. Uh, and it works fantastic. It uh, bolts right up, centers everything, and works perfectly. So, uh, the rear calipers, they, I, I was doing my best to, to measure the uh, bolt spacing on uh, Tim's car, and it was really difficult. If you ever try to measure a brake caliper that's mounted onto a cart, not easy. And so when I did, I thought, well, hell, it's got to be, you know, it seemed to be absolutely almost identical to the front. However, it's not. <laughs> uh, the fronts uh, are centered at 100 millimeter, or, you know, uh, bolt spacing. And on the uh, Lancia Scorpion and the Fiat X19, the rear calipers are also spaced at 100 millimeters center to center. The new Fiat 500 uh, calipers, uh, they are 90, 90 millimeters center to center. So one centimeter off, you know, that's uh, less than half of uh, an inch. So it's, it's, it's pretty small, but it's important. It's there. Uh, so I needed to figure out a way to uh, make a spacer for this to see if this would even work. And so this is what I did. Uh, so I needed to figure out what I needed to do to mount uh, these guys together and make, make them work. Uh, doing that with the suspension on the car is a nightmare. Uh, you can't possibly uh, measure stuff to the accuracy that you need to. Uh, so, uh, one of the things that uh, Tim Fiat Monkey had uh, in a bunch of suspension stuff that uh, he let me take as he was trying to get rid of stuff was uh, some rear suspension arms. Uh, and one of these had a uh, rear hub uh, with it. Now, this is fantastic. <laughs> it was a huge pain in the ass because the uh, bolts and everything were 
rusted onto the hub. But once I got everything free, I was able to now finally uh, assemble all this stuff together on the bench and uh, make some measurements. So uh, we're just going to assemble this right now. Doo -doo -doo. And uh, just because I kind of wanted to keep the uh, measurements of everything uh, consistent, and I don't know if it matters, absolutely, yes or no, but uh, I am using uh, these aluminum spacers on the uh, rear uh, hubs also, so that the wheels and everything are still, uh, the track is identical front and rear. And I know that's really not absolutely important, but uh, for the sake of this, I am doing it. Uh, it seems like it might possibly uh, assist in uh, aligning the vehicle, and if it turns out to be not necessary or I need to buy space uh, in back, you know, we'll see what happens then. However, uh, it did turn out to be a useful uh, happenstance in this uh, to uh, to further uh, center the brakes how I wanted to center the brakes on this rear rotor assembly. So this doesn't need to be super tight. These are my temporary lug nuts. Okay, I'll take uh, a handy dandy little magnet. Stop that from rotating. Okay, so here we are. Boop. Now, this uh, wheel, let's see, what is this? Would be located on passenger side rear. So this is uh, the car was facing forward that direction. This is the rear rotor. So the brake rotors, or the brake calipers that we want to use for this side would be this style. You want uh, the, all the fittings to be up on top. Now, uh, one of the things before we go too far is that the Fiat 500 mounts uh, their calipers behind the rear wheel. So behind the rear axle. So it is like behind everything. Uh, on uh, uh, Fiat X19s and Lancia Scorpions, they're mounted on the other side in front of the wheel. Uh, so that's different. Uh, so that's going to require uh, some modification as far as the whole parking brake stuff. I will outline that later after we get knee deep into this. So, what I figured out was that the appropriate uh, space required for uh, these adapters would be uh, essentially something that would allow the brake pads to not extend outside of the the rotors, you don't want, uh, in my mind, the uh, pads to be wearing and be outside the rim of the rotor, because then it would seem that they would start to wear unevenly, and because they're not uh, uh, pressing flat on a on the flat surface of the rotor. So I wanted to space the rotors or the calipers in close enough uh, so that that would not be an issue. However, you needed them out further enough so that there would be space for uh, fasteners to mount the adapters. What I came up with, uh, as far as measurements go, was this uh, little diagram where we have uh, the uh, 100 millimeters between uh, the stock Fiat X19 Lancia Scorpion uh, uh, caliper carrier mounts on the uprights and the 90 millimeter spacing for the 
uh, bolts on the Fiat 500 calipers. So this is the adapter. What I measured to be, as far as ideal for this situation, is 21 millimeters between the centers. So that uh, there's 21 millimeters uh, difference in between there, and so uh, this would essentially uh, be my pattern for making the brake calipers, or, uh, adapters. Uh, I measured that I could uh, have them be as small as a quarter inch thick, uh, but it seemed to me an ideal thickness for these adapters would be 5 sixteenths. Uh, it just gives you a little bit more meat to tap threads into, uh, and these are fine thread bolts, so, uh, you know, there's, there's a good uh, six or seven threads of uh, purchase on this when you're threading through this material. And, you know, you kind of want it to be as beefy as possible to create as much stiffness as possible. I, I didn't go with aluminum. Uh, I suppose I could have. Uh, that probably could have been a, a safe way to do it uh, using uh, uh, helicoils in the aluminum to uh, give a good uh, steel to steel uh, mounting, but there's a uh, metal shop not too far away from me, so uh, I found some uh, scrap 516 steel from them and used a porta band saw to uh, cut these out. Uh, and this uh, brings me to uh, another uh, CAD design thing. Uh, I've uh, happened upon um, my buddy was getting rid of some uh, plastic transparencies and uh, he gave me a whole box of them and I was like what the hell am I going to do with these and I discovered that these make fantastic uh, template uh, material uh, partly because you can <laughs> see through what you're trying to make a template of and it allows you to make very accurate measurements and then uh, also make uh, very accurate uh, uh, pieces after that. I, you know, I call it CAD because it's clear aided design. Ooh, ooh, clear, it's clear. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you could call it uh, TAD, transparency aided design, but then it just sounds like uh, you asked your preppy frat brother to help you design something. Hey, TAD, help me design this. Anyway, so, I uh, cut these out, shaped them, and tapped them. Uh, I didn't use any high-tech stuff, just good old-fashioned uh, metal punch to mark holes. And uh, I used a drill press to uh, drill everything accurately. And uh, took my time doing it, uh, going, you know, starting out small and then going up progressively larger in the hole size to maintain uh, that accuracy and then used a uh, uh, 10 by 1.25 tap to slowly tap through 5 16 inch thick steel. Not a huge fun thing to do. Anyway, I figured all this would give me exactly what I needed to mount these. Now I'm using the original uh, Fiat or Lancia Scorpion bolts. Uh, these are nice uh, uh, grade 8 fasteners. They're still useful. I don't like, you know, using old stuff all the time, but hey, when I'm, when you're making prototypes, you use what, no, oh, I need to flip this upside down. You use what you, you got around you. So thread those in like so. And so for this, I found that I needed to go to use a socket head bolt for the Fiat 500 brakes. I'm going to uh, order some uh, appropriately hardened bolts. I'm not sure of the hardness of these bolts. Uh, so that's going to be something I'll do in the future when I... 
drive it. Anyway, that gives uh, a nice mounting for this brake setup. Now these, uh, these adapters that I made out of 516 steel, they are pretty heavy duty. So I am adding more unsprung, unsprung weight uh, through them. By using them, I might, you know, later on uh, drill some lightning holes and shape these down so they're as minimal as possible while still providing uh, the strength uh, that I need. However, <laughs> after doing all this and uh, setting up for the video, getting everything I need, I was like, oh, okay, what if... I uh, used these original uh, carriers. They're already uh, pre-drilled pre and threaded uh, precisely for uh, the Fiat uh, brakes, uh, uh, brake carriers. Uh, would it be useful to use this as a, uh, as a piece to uh, create an adapter from? And the answer is yes, there is absolutely enough meat on these old carriers to create uh, adapters from. Uh, the inside face of this is uh, completely flat. Uh, they uh, measure out, let's see, the 516th adapters that I made measure out to be about uh, almost eight millimeters thick. Uh, these uh, ones already made for the Fiat and the Lancia are a touch over 10 millimeters. So they're actually thicker. And I would guess that, I don't know that these would be steel or, or I mean, cast iron. I would imagine they, they would be steel, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, you should be able to fairly easily uh, using a cut wheel to cut these apart, uh, grind uh, the uh, protruding sections uh, flat flat enough, and uh, create some spacers uh, for this application. Uh, I mean, ideally, you might want to have these pieces. Uh, uh, Put on a, a mill if you have a machinist buddy nearby and mill them uh, down to eight millimeters if you want to try and be close to what I created. But uh, really, uh, this would be a very useful thing without having to go through all this because this is a fair amount of work. Not that this wouldn't be, but it would be, you'd be halfway there. <laughs> okay, so moving on. From all that, uh, the last aspect of just doing this rough mounting of the calipers onto the, the car is, well, let's just pop these off. Is the emergency brake, parking brake uh, actuators. Uh, because the Fiat uh, 500 mounts them uh, behind the rear axle, if, uh, say, if this is the car going forward that way, uh, they don't have anything driving the rear axles like we do on the X19 and the Lancia well, Scorpion. So there's, uh, there's really nothing here. And so inside those hubs, you know, they have the uh, brake, uh, parking brake cable going up and over into this little actuator arm. And so you pull on the brake and it actuates it from behind. Now, because we want to mount them in front of the, the rear wheels in this application, you can't just flop it like that because that's not going to work. Uh, because all, all the bleed screws and the hose fittings are on the bottom. So then you take this caliper and you flop it to the other side so that it's in front of the car with the car still facing this direction. But then you have the situation 
where the actuator arm is now in front of the brake. Uh, so you don't have the, you can't, you can't have the cable coming, you know, to there. You would have to have the cable going down past and then looping up and coming back that direction. Well, what do you do in that situation? Well, uh, ideally you have kind of this setup of what the other brake looks like if, if that was mounted in front. Essentially, ideally, you want to be able to take this mechanism and mount it directly onto this caliper and just swap them back and forth. So what I just decided to figure out is if this was even possible. And it absolutely is. And that is going to be the subject of the next video.